Hello, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and I'm answering a quick question that I thought I could answer more easily if I just spoke with video than if I did in words. Uh, the question is how do atoms decay and uh, sub-question was uh, does uranium switch directly to lead, that sort of thing. Uh, let me just kind of make this kind of uh, quick. Um, an atom, as you know, is a, a, a proton and possibly neutrons most atoms that exist have protons and neutrons together and there's generally an equal number of protons to electrons although it's not always the case but it often is the case and these are atoms the protons and the neutrons make the nucleus the protons are positively charged the neutrons are neutrally charged they're not actually zero charged they're neutrally charged and the electrons are negatively charged and they orbit sort of around the outside more or less um, that's kind of a simplification of things because, you know, they're made of quarks and all this other stuff and the electrons don't orbit, they have probabilities and all this other stuff. But that's kind of getting a little bit beyond everything. So just kind of think of them orbiting in the classical, you know, Bohr model of the atom and so on. Now, there's lots and lots of protons and neutrons inside of, uh, of an atom. And sometimes the configurations are really tight and they're just stuck together tightly and they're not going anywhere because there's this force that holds those neutrons and protons together called the strong nuclear force. There's these little fields of energy around them, little gluon fields. Yeah, gluon, like glue, the whole stuff together. I don't know if that's where they came up with the name or not, but it's kind of funny. Um, the gluon fields are, are emanate between the particles and they're really, really hard to pull them apart, really hard. In fact, interesting trend. If you take the um, uh, 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 just about any two forces that exist in, in nature and spread them apart, their uh, uh, energy decreases in uh, uh, using the uh, distance inverse square rule. So if they go one meter's distance, then the, the energy is divided by half, but two meters is divided by four and so on. But not the strong nuclear force. It actually grows uh, 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 proportionate to the distance. So the further apart you, 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 you spread a proton and neutron, the more the energy holds the two of them together. But there is a, a breaking point where the two can split apart. But that's not how things decay. Here's what happens. In each of these configurations, there is a slight probability that a particle, so the particles could be in a particular configuration where a proton or a neutron might be able to find themselves just ever so slightly outside of these boundaries, the distance that these particles can hold one another together, this glue of gluons, if you like. Basically put, um, it's kind of like if you had a truck going down a bouncy road and in the back of it you had a box full, a bushel full of apples. The apples are bouncing around and the truck is moving. Most of them are going to be confined with inside of that bushel of apple, you know, the actual container. But technically speaking, there would exist conditions ever so slight, slight where the truck could hit a big enough bump or the apple could be moving just the right way that one of the apples might find itself ever so slightly outside of the bushel and could fall away from the confines of the bushel. It's sort of like that with the atom. Um, there are probabilistic scenarios where the, the, the particles can actually find themselves in a scenario where they're able to get away. One interesting uh, and very common sort of decay that involves this is called alpha decay, where two protons and two neutrons as a tight cluster go flying off together. It's basically like the, the, they become like a helium-4 atom, basically. And they can actually just go fly off. And um, the probability of this happening is large or small depending on the atom. Like, for example, uh, um, uh, an alpha emitter that's really, 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 really strong, like polonium-210, this happens all the time, hundreds, thousands of times a second, depending on how much of it you have. Whereas a really, really long-term alpha decay, like bismuth, bismuth, uh, I can't remember which bismuth it is, but it's the stable one, the one that you find in, like, Pepto-Bismol and stuff, that bismuth underco undergoes alpha decay like maybe one atom might decay once every 100,000 years or something like that. It's really, really, really rare because the confines that hold that atom together are really, really tight and it almost never happens, but occasionally it happens. And it's all probabilistic because it's all random. But remember, even when things are random like the lottery, there's st statistics you can pull out of it. Sorry, I'm kind of tired. I'm, you ever notice I'm always tired when I make my videos, like exhausted? I need to wake up fresh and do a video one day. But anyway, to answer your question about uranium, uh, uranium, like um, like this uranium right here, um, and you know it's uranium, because you can probably hear the Geiger counter going nuts in the background. Yeah. That uranium right there is uh, starting the beginning of a long decay chain, the two, uranium-238 decay chain. 
let me just quickly tell you what it goes through. It goes from uranium-238 to thorium-234, thorium-234 to protactinium-234M, protactinium-234M to uranium-238, did I say to uranium-238? So U-238, TH-234 to uh, PA-234M to U-234 to TH-230 to... Uh, R A wait hold on radon's R N R A R A two two six radon two twenty two polonium two eighteen lead two fourteen bismuth two fourteen polonium two fourteen lead two ten bismuth two ten polonium two ten and then finally becomes lead so all those things one decays into the next decays into the next decays into the next 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 it takes a long time to go through this whole decay thing in reality the final um part the final piece to this whole decay series uh. Or is it sitting around here someplace? I have my um, polonium-210 disc sitting around here somewhere. Here it is. It fell while I was doing a talking. Here we go. Polonium-210. That's the last stage, and this is actually becoming uh, lead slowly. Um, it takes it about four or five years for it to all become lead. So what, what, the, what happens is the uh, particles have a stable configuration, which becomes unstable, and they, they, they can snap off. There are other forms of decay too, like a, a beta decay, beta positive, beta negative, in which case in a beta negative decay, for example, a um, neutron becomes a proton. In, beta, in a, a, a beta positive decay, a proton becomes a neutron, and there's a change in energy which is emitted as a, a beta particle, po beta positive, beta negative. Again, though, this is a particle configuration scenario where the particles have the ability to move into a particular configuration, which is probabilistic. It's all a game of chance. If that makes any more sense, let me know. If it doesn't make any more sense, let me know, and I'll explain it better. Um, I, this wasn't like an official video. This is just like a little five-minute explanation of something. Let's see how long it is. Uh, seven minute and forty second, second explanation. This has been Tom from anti-proton.com, and oh, as soon as this thing gets back from getting uh, worked on, it'll be time for the Pulley Master Portable Gamma Spectroscopy video. Bye-bye.